Recently, I was sitting at my painting desk testing my blood sugar. I'm a type 1 diabetic and have been since the age of 12, so this is a regular part of my daily routine. But on this particular occasion, I found myself looking from the drop of blood on my finger up to the painting bottles on my wall and back again. And quite frankly, my curiosity got the better of me. So today, we're going to attempt to paint a miniature using only my own blood. And before we embark on this journey together, I want to make it clear that you should not try this at home. I have always wanted to say that. I'll be using a prescribed medical device that I have over 20 years experience with, and I'm at no risk of harming myself. Also, while there's no graphic or gory footage in this video, I will be showing you actual footage of my blood. So if that makes you queasy at all, maybe this isn't the right video for you. So I won't be held liable if you barf on your cell phone or keyboard. All right, the first thing we need to do is collect the blood. See, I just go into my handy dandy drug bag here. All legal drugs, all legal drugs. And I bring out my testing supplies that I use for testing my blood sugar. And there is our little needle right there. All right, I've got my wet palette here ready to collect my sample. I'm hoping that the moisture from the wet palette will keep the blood from coagulating too much as we're working with it. We're gonna make some swatches here to show what the blood as well as some different mediums and water mixed with it will act like. Hopefully we can uh, get a good drop or two minimum here. Okay, we have a little bit of blood here. Um, it doesn't feel like very much, but I wanna get moving just in case that uh, it coagulates fast. To help get an understanding of how the blood will act on a brush and on the surface of a model, I decided to test it out on a piece of plastic card in its pure state, as well as mixed with water and mixed with a variety of acrylic mediums. I figured since blood is water-based and these mediums are all meant for acrylic water-based paint, one of them might actually help me in painting a higher quality end product by the end. But we're not two minutes into this video and I've already made a pretty ridiculous mistake. You see, I forgot to prime the plastic card so the plastic was super glossy and slick and the blood didn't even stick to it. Okay, with that rookie mistake out of the way, I have now, oh shit, this fucking thing isn't even dry. Okay, I did prime this, but I just ran my finger over it and all of it wicked off. Why am I having so much trouble? I am happy to report that the blood paints on very smoothly over a prime surface and sticks just great. It is very transparent, even without any dilution. It does struggle to give a smooth, even coat when it's not diluted. I'm no hematologist, but it feels like there's something going on with like the, the platelets and the the red blood cells and the hemoglobin that makes them want to stick together. The good news is it thins down beautifully with regular old water. It creates this wonderful, thin, smooth, even coat like a wash or a glaze would be if we were painting with inks or acrylics. And the other mediums I tested, while they worked just fine, seem to be geared towards working with paint that has a much thicker consistency. In general, they seem to make the blood harder to work with than just diluting it with plain old water. So my plan is to both use undiluted blood for a nice, rich, deep red color that we can build up over many layers, as well as blood diluted with pure water to give us a nice, smooth, faint look, as well as to blend over some rougher areas of the model. Speaking of model, which one should we paint today with my blood? I've been thinking about this, and luckily, the world of Warhammer has a ton of different factions that seem to be obsessed with blood and that will fit right in with this scheme. We've got the Blood Angels, and although these red-armored soldiers are good guys, they have blood in their name, and this dude is literally drinking blood from a cup. There's also some amazing vampires in Age of Sigmar. When I think of drinking blood, I think of vampires. And these guys will look amazing covered in blood from a recent victim. Also, the chaos god Korn is literally the blood god. And his followers have names like blood warriors and blood letters. Maybe some night haunt ghosts covered in the bedsheets splattered with their own blood from the gory way that they met their demise. 
And there's probably 20 other options or more just in the world of Warhammer that would be awesome fits. But I decided to go with the Daughters of Cain. These ferocious female warriors are proper blood worshippers, so much so that they bring a massive cauldron filled with blood with them every time they go to battle. So I get to work, starting off with the helmet of my sister of slaughter here. I want this to be a deep, dark, rich blood color, along with the rest of her armor that I'll paint as I go. Since I'm working in a monochrome scheme, we really don't have the ability to create contrast through color variation. So we're gonna have to focus on creating contrast through light and dark blood. Yeah, unlike all the sci-fi movies, I couldn't find other blood that was different colors. There's probably some frog in the Amazon somewhere that has green blood that I could use instead, but I'm stuck with only red blood, sorry. I want her skin to be a very pale color, so I thin down my blood with an equal amount of water and wash all of the skin with it. And I gotta tell you, this kind of looks amazing to me. It's crazy how much this looks like pale skin. It has just that hint of red undertone to it to let you know the skin is alive while still coming across as very pale. And I guess this kind of makes sense. If someone has a very pale skin color, the only bit of color that you see is from that warm hint of blood beneath the skin. And we're just painting with the actual blood that you'd see underneath the skin of somebody. And human skin tone is notoriously very difficult to get right to paint on miniatures, and this was kind of ridiculously easy. I feel like right now I should probably reiterate the fact that I don't want you to try this at home. <laughs> Today's video is brought to us by the Ridge Wallet. Now when I first started painting, I realized that having a big fat wallet in my back pocket only made my posture terrible and my back hurt. So I switched over to a thin one to wear in my front pocket. Throughout the years, I've tried many different kinds and different brands of thin wallets. But when I got the Ridge, I realized that I've been missing out on something awesome all this time. First of all, the thing's got a lifetime guarantee. Every one of my other ones either broke or got gnarly or smelly. This thing is gonna last you forever. Next, it comes with a 45 day guarantee. So I really got a good testing of this thing to find out if it was worth it or not. And I gotta say, there's a reason why they do that because people aren't gonna send it back. This thing is amazing. And they're customizable. They come with a little tool so you can adjust what kind of accessory you want on the back to make sure that it works best for you. It's really slick to get my cards out easily and it holds a lot more cards than all those other ones that I've tried while still keeping a nice slim profile. So if you wanna see all the awesome styles that they have and maybe give them a try, click on the link in the video description below and you get a little special spicy deal for being a member of the Ninjon family. Now let's get back to the video. Because the blood is so transparent when I paint with it, even unthinned, I struggle to give good coloration. I quickly learned that I'd need to build up layer over layer of this blood on top of itself to create a nice depth of color. And I worked quickly putting on an initial layer over everything before the blood started to dry or coagulate on my palette. In all honesty, this really wasn't much different than dealing with acrylic ink or paint that has been thinned down quite a bit. It acted predictably up to this point, and I just was enjoying seeing how this was making the model come to life. Like the model didn't actually come to life, but I feel like if there was a dark ritual that brought your models to life, painting it in your own blood would certainly be like step two. After I had painted each area of the model with its first coat, I let it thoroughly dry and came back in for a second coat over all of the areas that needed more depth. Little did I know that even when the blood was perfectly dry, it reactivated every time I came over the top with it with a new coat with a damp brush filled with more blood. The previous layer would immediately become active again and it would be pushed around by my brush to create these nasty splotches. So I realized I needed to apply a layer of matte varnish with an airbrush between each layer of blood to prevent this reactivation. 
And while this was a bit of a pain and slowed down my painting process, it also helped with the fact that blood, especially when piled up and really thick, becomes very glossy, making it really hard to see the details and all the hard work I'm putting into painting the model. Oh, the varnish layer also had one more benefit that I wasn't prepared for and didn't notice for days later. And I'm gonna let you know what that is with your own eyes at the end of the video. Oftentimes in my videos, I'll tell you how you can support the channel and allow me to make more videos by joining me over on Patreon for a couple bucks a month, or maybe picking up a Ninjion shirt, or even using the affiliate links down below to use the gear that I use to make my painting projects complete every single day. But I realize now that that might imply that you could go use an affiliate link to buy vials of my own blood. But that's not a real thing. You can't actually do that. Don't look for those links down below. But if you wanted to support me in the other ways I talked about, that's still really nice. And of course, I'm not the first artist in the history of mankind that's used their own blood to paint with. And while I've not heard of any miniature painters that have done this before, there are tons of amazing, inspiring artists out there that work in this most macabre of mediums. I noticed that some of these blood paintings appeared as if they were a more rusty brown coloration than the blood I'm painting on my model. And I'm expecting the model to change in a very similar way in the days to come after the paint job is complete, which is pretty exciting to think about. It's like it's transforming into something new again. But then I wondered, what if the varnish that I'm using to keep the blood from moving all over the place will actually change how it oxidizes and dries over time? I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now I know I said I was only gonna use my own blood as medium for this paint job. And I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out with just the blood. But I did decide to use a little bit of pure white paint to crisp up the edges and bring a level of detail to the model to make it look truly finished. And I do think this adds to the final piece without detracting from the aspect that makes this miniature wholly unique. A piece of me was quite literally given in order to bring this piece to life. And no, I don't mean actual life. I mean like more figuratively, as in art tells its own story, man. And in that way, it's a tangible object with a life of its own within this vast, never-ending universe. No, it means I'm actually alive now. <laughs> and with that, our Adventures in Blood is complete. Now, before I show you the final sexy shot of our Sister of Slaughter here, I want to remind you what our swatches look like. This is seven days after having painted them. Take a look at that color. And here is our model complete, seven days after drying. It's still vibrant and red. There's a small bit of that dark reddish rust color in the darkest areas, but overall it looks much different than the blood left to dry in the open air. I gotta say, this was a pretty fun experience, even if it was a little bit Jeffrey Dahmer-esque in the journey. And I'm not gonna forget this model anytime soon, even if holding it, it does feel kinda creepy. So thanks for hanging out today. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, you are my kind of weirdo. And as long as you're here, why don't you hit the subscribe button if you aren't already. I really appreciate having you come back. I'm gonna be coming back soon with another new video. And sometime between now and then, make sure you slay the gray. They're ploppers. And here is where things got a little freaky. <laughs> Oh, it's been freaky this whole time. <laughs> I don't really know what implies, but...
Blood jokes. They never run dry. I wonder how many times you can say blood in a YouTube video before they take it down. Let's find out.